So we're going to talk about uh, our pistols. And one thing that we found difficult when we, whenever we started getting into paintball and magfed and pistol playing specifically was there wasn't a lot of resources uh, telling us how to do stuff. Nope. Uh, like for example, my first setup was a peanut tank in a rucksack on my back, and that's that's heavy. That's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It just you're, it's really cumbersome, and you're running through big old tank bouncing on the back. It doesn't really work out very well. Yeah. I mean, I had plenty of mag space, but yeah. <laughs> but at that point, I was I was uh, I had a bandolier with five Faz mags uh, with seven rounders in it. And then two Zetas on the back, and that's way too much ammo. Yeah. You don't need that. No. You really don't. It only takes one shot to kill somebody, mm -hmm. so why do you carry a big old hopper full? Yeah. So we're going to talk about some modifications. Uh, Brett actually hasn't done too much to his. No, I've kept mine pretty simple, um, except for I've done the rail delete, so that's all deleted off there. Um, Dehorned that, got rid of the little lanyard loop. Um, and also the internals, I put a TCR valve in there, so if you're running HPA with your remote line, you definitely want that TCR valve, or else you're going to have problems with it. Um, if you want to just run CO2, I mean, I guess you could use a stock valve, but the TCR valve, you get a lot better efficiency. So what's yours? Mine, I've done everything to it and more. So one of the first things I like to do was I chamfered the inside edge of the mag well and that just lets you slide your mags in just a little bit easier. Uh, I also did the rail delete and I took the horn and the lanyard hole off. Um, one thing that was really interesting was I got into stippling so whenever I shaved it down the uh, the grip so I could put these 1911 grips on there I also cut off the the back palm grooves and the finger grooves and used a wood burner uh, to stipple those. And I also did a little bit of stippling on my magazines, but that's kind of just for show more than anything. Yeah, yeah. Really. But uh, one of my favorite things ever is this Calvert Creative Fret Block, which uh, I really didn't like the aluminum block. Yeah, yeah, the aluminum block is, is a little bit heavier. Um, it doesn't really bother me, I guess because I'm just so used to it, but it is definitely lighter yeah. without those. The first one I ever used was a Dead Cell. Um, shout out to Calvert and shout out to Dead Cell. Yeah. You guys. We, I used that and I only had, that was when I was running one pistol. But I noticed the uh, Calvert Creative ones and so I decided to get some of those. They're a little little bit expensive, but honestly I've been having, a, I've been using them for so long. It's, it's totally worth it. It really is. Um, another thing we've both done completely differently is with my mag release I drilled a hole and put a screw in there just so I can have the extended one um, pretty solid and everything but he went with the exalt didn't you yeah I used the exalt ambidextrous mag releases and I actually for my pistol I did the exact same thing that you yeah. did at the beginning because it was so annoying with the, the default TIP it's just setup. so tiny yeah you, you literally have, have to break, break your, your grip, grip to do it yeah. and so that was always so frustrating, so I put a big old screw on the end, but yeah. when I decided that I wanted to run two instead of just one, I figured I can't figure out how to break that mag release with my left hand because I'm right-handed, so I decided to go with the ambidextrous grips, um, and they work out pretty well for me. It takes a little bit of getting used to, like everything really, but yeah, uh, I enjoy it. Uh, okay. when a lot of people say, they're like, okay, so you have the remote line adapter on here. Um, can you still use CO2? As long as you have that little slide check mm -hmm. valve in here, you can still use your CO2 cartridges. Um, most games, we start out with a CO2 cartridge to get those long shots and then just drift off into HPA. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why, but for some reason, the Tipix actually works really well with both CO2 and HPA. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting because I'll put a full CO2 in there, pop off a couple shots just to get rid of that, that super high pressure in there, mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll slide the HPA, and it works just fine. It works like a charm. Yeah, yeah. And then you don't have to worry about your CO2 running out and then switching to HPA, because I know you've had a couple games yeah. where you said, I could have killed him, yeah. but I didn't have the HPA connected. And exactly. That's always frustrating. Yeah, so it, it just really works out when you have both of them in there. Mm-hmm. 
barrels, uh, something that we both, we have different barrels. Um, I contacted a guy down here, Lewis Hofield. Shout out Lewis. Um, I think is, he's running Lancer Industries now, I think is what it's called. Um, this barrel's dirty as crap. <laughs> but anyways, uh, he bored out my stock barrel so that I can use freak inserts. Um, so that has been a game changer. Mm -hmm. Like you can shoot some lasers. Um, I've seen a lot of people talking about freak inserts, flex honing, um, all that different stuff, rifled barrels. Um, I've messed with the rifled barrels, the straight rifled barrels, all that. And I still find this to be the best. Um, I haven't tried flex honed barrels yet, but I think that's something you're going to be trying. That's what I'm going to try next. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive. I think they're about $40 for one flex hone. And you can, since the barrels on the TIPX are so small, you can get away with flex honing too. Uh, so that's my next project. Um, but if that doesn't work out so well, I'm probably going to get mine bored out because that's just, it's crazy. His accuracy yeah. has gone up. But his accuracy was always really good because he used to use a... Uh, oh, the carbon fiber yeah, barrel. The carbon yeah, carbon fiber barrel. Uh, and that deadly winds. Yeah, crazy. I used that one. It was, it was pretty good too. It was awesome. Yeah. Um, your triggers yeah my triggers, triggers man. right that's been a hit with the z yeah. so the difference between my triggers and these triggers are these are a little bit heavier and mine are a little bit lighter i don't know if you can see the difference in those two right there but all i did really was shave it down about halfway i mean you can still see the uh, the support structure in the middle uh, I shaved it down, um, put some epoxy in there. That was super easy. It just takes a little bit of time, really, but it works like a charm. Yeah. And he used my second iteration yep. uh, last week and said that one was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, I really dig it. Um, I left this one stock so that we could go over in this video, but I'm probably going to end up shaving this one down this mm -hmm. week. Um, but, yeah, I mean... Again, it trims off a little bit of weight, makes your trigger pull a little smaller, so mm -hmm. you can really just hone in on those shots. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a really good improvement overall. I'm probably going to end up trimming these down a little bit. I had made these, showed them off a little bit on uh, on Facebook, and Vengeful Assassin, Tristan, he uh, took that design and made a fang design. So then I combined both of them and that's what we used yesterday, not yesterday, last week. Yeah, yeah last week. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that one to mine as well. Uh, one thing that's very, very important when you're modifying your Tipix, if you're using a Dremel, if you're um, doing subtractive work, is face mask and eye goggles, especially with the triggers. You don't mm -hmm. want you aluminum in your mouth. shards in your mouth you don't want it in your nose you don't want it in your eyes because uh, that can really mess you up another thing is it's like when you're doing all the deletes and stuff do sl go slow like yeah um you can always take more off but you can't add it back on it gets mm -hmm. kind of gets kind of messy if you try to add anything back on so just go slow do it a little bit see if you like it do it a little bit more see if you like it and just go from there mm -hmm. another thing to also remember though as well is these shells are 30 bucks a piece. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can just buy a shell off online and mess with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's the beauty of, of this is as long as you have the internals, you can do whatever with the shell. Yeah. And it really, I mean, you can come, I've seen some crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've seen guys chop off the whole the front. The whole front end, yeah. Barrel. Um, just all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, hollow out the entire grip so you can see the mm -hmm. whole magazine up through there. I've seen that. Um, a lot of different people have done a lot of different stuff. But I think that's the beauty of uh, of paintball is there's so many different loadouts, there's so many different customization techniques, and that's what's great is is with all the new pistols coming out in 2018, it's going to be really interesting to see what else people are going to yeah. do with this kind of stuff. Um, that's what I'm really excited about. Yeah, I mean I've seen so many different stuff coming out of people like Samuel Hodder, um, mm -hmm. just everybody making different different versions of their their pistol and just improvement and doing all sorts of different crazy stuff to it all right so i guess this has been a test podcast or yeah. whatever we're gonna call yeah. it number one our pilot yeah uh we're gonna come back next time a little bit more prepared maybe 
Yeah, I mean, we didn't really introduce ourselves, but I'm Brett, uh, Mantis Assassin. And I'm Ethan, I'm Cheetah Assassin. Yeah, so I mean, that probably should have been at the first. But <laughs> yeah, we don't know really whatever. <laughs> um, but this channel's called Primal Productions, so check us out. Check us out. We already have uh, one video up. It'll probably be outdated by that the time this comes out. Uh, but I do have a video um, showing how the steps and the process of shaving these down. Um, it's not very instructional. It's more um, just an example because there's, there's, I guarantee you, there's way different ways to do this. I mean, I've even thought about using JB Weld because that would be um, even more secure than epoxy. Yeah. Epoxy is kind of iffy. You can come yeah. back and forth with epoxy, but yeah, there's so many different ways. Days. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, uh, if you have any comments, like, subscribe, do all that things that youtubers yeah. do yeah, um, sure. if you've modified your pistols sh show it off yeah i mean it's great i mean we, definitely we love seeing the different kind of creative things that people do um because it gives us inspiration exactly uh yeah it's really cool so yeah check us out watch the next one mm -hmm. tell your mom tell your friends <laughs> <laughs> tell your mom's friends tell your mom's friends stay tuned